What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Storytime, we're gonna be talking about my experience recording Love on Top for Beyonce. You know the song, stay tuned. What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and like I said on the intro, this week's episode of Storytime is all about uh, my experience recording Love on Top for Beyonce. Um, that was one of the most uh, incredible sessions of my life, uh, certainly in hindsight. And um, But before I get into talking about that actual session, let me just sort of set it up uh, and sort of fill you in on how I even connected with Beyonce in the first place. So uh, I actually met Beyonce through a guy named Omar Grant, who's the current president of uh, Rock Nation uh, Records, although he wasn't at the time. Um, and I had met him working with Fabulous, and uh, one day he just called me and said, Hey, Swiv, are you available to fill in for Beyonce? Uh, fill in as an engineer for Beyonce. She needs somebody today. And I said, Absolutely, of course I can do that. So I, um, I go up to uh, Rock the Mic Studios, which is where she was working. And uh, I actually, I don't think she actually showed up the first day, uh, but I think I was asked to come back the second day. This was a little while ago. It was about 10 years ago. So um, uh, I came back the next day and, and I finally met her and, and I got to work and I recorded this uh, amazing song with her uh, called Life, uh, which I don't think was ever released, but um, uh, you know, we, we had a good rapport and, and, and the, the session went smoothly. And after it, she went on vacation for about four weeks and I'm, or, or six weeks maybe. And I'm thinking, uh, well, you know, that was an amazing session. I got to meet her. That was really cool. And, uh, you know, nice story to tell uh, down the road. But I didn't expect anything else to come of it. But, uh, you know, four or six weeks later when she came back to New York, she... Uh, she called me up and, and um, they, they, her team invited me back to the studio and, and she asked me to, if I would want to participate and record her, her next album, which became the four album. So uh, of course I did and, and, um, and I had the pleasure of working with her for about two years there. Uh, so that was how I, I connected with Beyonce. Uh, so, so quick little lesson there is, you know, just always be available. When you get that call for an opportunity like that, it doesn't matter if it's your girlfriend's birthday. It does not matter if you have a wedding to go to. You drop everything. If you really care about your career, you drop everything to make sure you take advantage of that opportunity because you don't know when you're going to get it again. Um, and so, uh, so I would encourage anybody to, to uh, prioritize that if you, if, if you are really looking to achieve something great in your career. Sometimes you have to. Um, but anyway, so I connect with Beyonce and just to set up how, how the recording of this album worked, um, I actually, we got to travel sort of around the world and, and work on this record. Um, Jay and Kanye were, were working on Watch the Throne. We went to London with them and, and recorded uh, for a week or, or so. Uh, then, you know, later on in the process, Jay was uh, on tour with U2 and they were doing an Australian tour and so we went out there and they worked on Watch the Throne, Jay and Kanye and, and B and I worked on uh, her record. Uh, but primarily we did the majority of that album in New York City. So, uh, and for uh, the more majority of the time we were in New York City, we were at a studio called Legacy Recording, uh, which was formerly and more famously uh, Right Track uh, Studios, a very famous uh, New York uh, or in very famous New York studio, a uh, lot of uh, historical significance to that studio. So anyways, the setup of that studio is there's three rooms. There's an A room, which has this very, very large um, uh, sort of live room where you could do a full orchestra if you wanted. Uh, I should say had because, of course, the studio is closed down now. Um, but yeah, they had a, a large A room that was big enough to house an orchestra. They had a B room, which was a smaller room, but uh, the first digital room in New York City. I think they had the Capricorn console, I want to say, uh, for the you know engineer nerds who are who are watching this. And uh, and then they had a a third room, the C room, which was downstairs, which also had a decent sized live room. Uh, and when we were working, we had all three studios booked out, so we had the entire facility booked out. So Beyonce and I would set up in Studio A to cut all of her vocals. 
We had an album producer who was the day-to-day -day producer on the album, a guy by the name of Shea Taylor, super talented producer, who uh, he would be in a vocal booth, uh, basically just banging out beats all day. So if she had an idea she wanted to work on, he would just start working on it all day. <laughs> and, and then we would usually have other producers or writers set up in the other two rooms. And so at the time when Love on Top came about, we had The Dream was in Studio B. And so he would be writing songs. So Shay might make a beat, Dream would write to it. Dream might make a beat and he would write to it. Or Beyonce might get a beat from someone else and send it to Dream and he would just write songs to them. So uh, Shay Taylor did this beat that turned into Love on Top and he came in and played it for, for us and uh, B loved it and she asked Dream to write to it. And so Dream did and he wrote what became, well, he wrote Love on Top. Uh, and in his version of the song, in the final chorus, it's two choruses back to back, and in the last of the two choruses, there's a, he added a half step pitch modulation. So what I mean by that, for those who aren't familiar with music theory or anything, um, that's when you take the last chorus and you transpose it, so you raise the key by a half step. And it has a very unique, uh, um, it's a very unique technique that it just adds this, this sort of like, uh, you know, boost of energy to that final chorus to sort of act as the climax of the song. Uh, and then you can sort of like go to the outro from there. Um, and what, and a half step for those, again, who don't know music theory is like sort of the next step up on a piano, let's say. So from a white key to the next black key right next to it. Um, and so he did this half step up and this is very common. You, you may not even realize it, but you've heard it in all sorts of, uh, pop songs like Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. Uh, the, the final chorus, uh, does a half step up, uh, Celine Dion, my heart will go on. Does it, uh, I think, uh, Whitney Houston, uh, I will always love you. Does it, um, there's lots of amazing, amazing songs that do this, that utilize this technique and it, it's sort of tried and true and. Uh, very common in, in power ballads. So Dream does this and we start, and B loves it, and so we start recording the song. And my typical recording process with Beyonce is I would record all of the lead vocals first. So she'd get in the booth and we'd just do all the ver both the verses, all the choruses, and she'd record between three and five takes of each uh, part. And then I, she would take a break and I would comp the vocal. What I mean by comping the vocal is taking the best parts, the best lines of each take and forming sort of a super take. Now with Beyonce, that's actually very hard because she's such a good singer that every take sounds great. And so you're really listening for those little nuances that make something sound a little bit better. Uh, so it might be the timing of a word or um, the you know, just the general delivery, the emotion, the, uh, she might go into falsetto in a word that sounds better and do it full voice on another one. Uh, and so it's really just about, uh, finding the best, uh, pieces. And once I would find all the best pieces, we would comp that into a single lead vocal. Then we'd cut all the backgrounds. And then on love on top, the last thing that we did was the final chorus leads where we had to pitch the song up. So Shay Taylor sent me all the stems to the beat. We finish cutting to the two track. I start adding the stems because I need to be able to pitch up uh, just the melodic parts. I don't want to pitch up the drums. I just want to, because they don't have any sort of melody to them. I want to pitch up the, the sort of the roads and the, the horns and, and all the other elements that are in the, in the track. So I get all the stems. So again, for those who aren't familiar with, with the technical aspect of recording stems are like all the individual parts that make up a song. So your kick drum, your snare drum, your hi-hat, your bass line, your piano, your guitar, your vocal, like whatever. So, uh, so I get all the stems and we get to the final chorus and I have to pitch up all the stems a half, half step. So, uh, of course I do that. Uh, she sings it. It sounds great. I think we're done. We're about, you know, maybe we start mixing and she says, wait, let's do another one. I said, what do you mean? She's like, fly another chorus. So we'll have a third chorus at the end and raise that another half step. So now two half steps up from the original key of the song. And I'm sort of like thinking, uh, why? Like, what's, what's the point? But of course, you know, my, my job is to facilitate her, uh, 
uh, creative um, uh, desires. And so, of course, I do it. Uh, so we, we do the next half step up and she records it. Sounds great as always. And then she says, do another one. Let's do a fourth. So now in my head, I'm like, what is going on? So I, I fly it down. I, I pitch it up. I, I do what I'm supposed to do. She sings it. Then she says, do a fifth. Like now I'm just like, what is, what are you talking about? B? this is crazy. Why are we doing this? But, but either way I fly it, pitch it up. And when we get to the fifth, we're sort of at the peak of her full voice register. Cause that song does get very high towards the end there. And um, then she says, let's do a sixth. And I'm like, B, we're at the top of your voice. You're gonna, you're gonna really hurt your voice here. Really that's nonsense because like she has what probably the most powerful voice I've heard. And <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's no hurting that voice, at least not, not in my experience. Um, and uh, so, so we do the six and then she starts going above her full voice, going into falsetto. So again, for those who don't know, falsetto is when you're sort of like humming in your head voice, right? It's not coming from your diaphragm and your chest. It's coming from your sort of your, your, your throat, if you will. Um, uh, and so she goes into her head voice and then she said, honestly, I could probably do three more. Now that we're in falsetto, I could do, do a couple more. I'm like, I think, I think everybody got the idea, B. We, uh, you know, this is, we've already got six choruses at the end here. She's like, yeah, you're right. All right, we're, we're done. So, uh, you know, now at the time I'm thinking she's just blowing off some steam, trying to, you know, just, just be creative and, and do something different. But I'm thinking we're going to toss this. Uh, as much as the song was great, uh, we had done something similar on another song. Uh, which never got used, uh, and we actually recorded, she recorded 120 vocals over a chorus, individually. Take one, take two, take three, we did 120 of them. For no other reason than she wanted to see what it would sound like and kind of just like blow off some steam, I guess. So, uh, and then the next day after we spent, you know, six or eight hours recording that one song, uh, she told me to, to throw it away. So, <laughs> so I thought love on top would be similar. Like she would listen to it the next morning and be like, Oh, this is stupid. Why are we doing this? And, 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 and ask me to, to delete it. But, um, uh, she didn't. And, and, uh, thank God she didn't because, uh, that's sort of one of the most innovative songs I think I've ever worked on. Uh, and of course, you know, hindsight is 2020, but it won a Grammy for, uh, best traditional R and B, vocal performance, I think, uh, or pop vocal performance maybe. Um, and you know, that was the first, uh, Grammy that I was involved in and, and, uh, certainly made, made for a, a memorable story here. Um, but you know, the lesson that she taught me in this whole process is that, you know, there are no rules in music and it's very easy to get caught up by what you've heard before, or, oh, these are, these are the quote unquote rules that, uh, everybody else has sort of followed. And I had never heard this like pitching up of a, a vocal like six times. And so it's easy to get in this trap of nobody else has done it before. Therefore it must not be good. Um, and, and she taught me a really important lesson and you, we've all seen throughout her career. She's real, always been an innovator. Um, you really do have to try to make mistakes. You do have to try things. Sometimes they won't work and sometimes they will. Uh, and it's those happy accidents where you try something that you don't really expect much out of and it turns into this genius idea. That's where musicians and artists innovate. That's where people become stars and, and uh, you know, become known for something because they tried something, they broke the mold, they, they, they cracked through uh, the ceiling and, and, and they didn't want to be, you know, fit themselves in this box. Uh, and so it was a really important lesson for me to learn and something I've carried along with me throughout my career. And I always try to, uh, I look to that session in particular when, uh, somebody asked me to do something that I'm, I'm unsure of. I'm like, you know what, let's just try it because you never know. And, and that's what music is all about. There is no wrong answers. Um, everything is on the table as long as it sounds good. And so, uh, and so I'm really grateful that I learned that lesson from her and, and, uh, have such fond memories of, of that time, 
uh, working on her record and especially that song in particular. So uh, that is story time for this week. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, comment, and uh, I'm DJ Swivel. I'll see you in two weeks. Peace.